Well, good to see everybody. Uh, I don't have any opening statement this morning, so I'm happy to let you have that. Well, obviously, before the end of the day, I, I will. I'll have a statement, um, a letter that uh, you can see. But I, I plan to allow it to go into law uh, without a signature. I uh, talked with some legislative leaders this morning and uh, expressed my concerns about it. Um, and also, I discussed a defect in the law that, uh, as it's passed that uh, has an inconsistency in uh, when independent candidates may file their petitions. So I asked the legislative leaders if they would like to call the bill and uh, fix it and send it back to me. Uh, they indicated their preference is to uh, pass another amendment in some other bill uh, after the uh, after this uh, becomes effective and fix it there. But um, there are, there's one section that says independents have to file by June. There's another section that says independents may file as late as September. So they need to, to deal with that in some way and they indicated that they interest in doing it subsequently. I've uh, made it clear that um, I don't think it's in the best interest of our uh, representative democracy to have a summertime um, primary. Uh, we've had a uh, September primary for nearly a century. I think it served as well. Uh, the argument that this is essential to comply with the federal law uh, is not being uh, uh, respected by nine of the 11 states with September primaries. Only Minnesota and Vermont feel an urgency to change the statute. The argument that it's uh, important to our men and women who are serving overseas is equally specious because uh, the testimony from military officials was that they prefer to uh, use the latest technology, namely uh, electronic voting, uh, which uh, is far more accessible and uh, uh, customary for communications in combat zones. It's a lot easier to uh, send an electronic file than it is to get mail pouches in and out of Bora Bora. And I think we ought to understand that this is the 21st century and we ought to be looking for alternatives that maximize participation. I'm disappointed that the Secretary of State and Legislature chose not to pursue those alternatives uh, that are certainly available to us now, but uh, I don't want to uh, impair the general collegiality of the session uh, so far and, and hope that uh, the next Secretary of State will look seriously at uh, more modern options. So is that sort of your main reason in opting for not vetoing it was just not to change the tone and the dynamics so far? I think uh, there's not much interest in the legislature in resisting it um, and the strong support for it, as you know. And, and uh, compared to what we need to deal with, this is really a fringe issue. Uh, what we ought to be focused on is balancing the budget reducing the property tax burden, getting the jobs bill passed that it still hasn't shown up and I wanted to be on my desk by the end of January, um, working hard to rebuild the economy of Vermont and, and uh, maintain our fiscal integrity, <coughs> not worrying about issues that, that aren't central to uh, the well-being of Vermonters. You, you veto bills in the, in the uh, past that many people would consider fringe issues, dealing with the pension board, make, uh, make up some other issues. Why let what you consider a bad law go into the Well, because I think that's very important. Uh, a number of you and others have talked about the difference in tone between uh, last year and this year. And um, I want to continue to work with legislative leaders on the budget issues, on the challenges for change, on uh, ensuring that we make whatever progress we can to get Vermont uh, back on the road to prosperity. Uh, this is not an important matter. It would uh, set up a divisive fight at the time that we need to focus on more important issues. So. We'll have one in August, and uh, the legislators and the next Secretary of State can evaluate it and make some appropriate recommendations next year. Is, is your thing saying that there's not much interest in existing it? Is that the way of saying you think they would override it? Well, there's strong support uh, on a bipartisan basis for making the change. So. What is your impression then of when the independence is defined? Well, which, which one would prevail in the room? Not a lawyer, but uh, I, I would assume that uh, an interpretation on access to the ballot would always be made uh, uh, in the more generous uh, way, so that uh, it's likely currently they would be allowed to file in September. I don't think that was the intent. I understand it, the General Assembly. That's why I think the 
seek to uh, offer a further amendment at some point or something to fill before the term. You don't think what was the intent to allow independents to file as late as September? Right. I think that. But you think that's what happened? Well, if you look at the law as it sits now, I think that's the way it would be to do it. It's not your preference. No, I, I don't believe in the second bite of the apple. I, I think uh, you ought know, to decide early on whether you're here to a political party or you're an independent. I mean, uh, the word independent denotes independence from a political party. And I don't know how you decide in uh, uh, June that you're a Republican or a Democrat and then a couple months later decide that you're not. 